We say on Hanukkah, the miracles which you made by Mima Hembat Manazir, which can also mean it happened in those days, but it's also happening today. So, we've already spoken about some aspects of the difference of opinion between Betil and Bet Shammai, the Gemara and Shabbos, where Betil will say, Malim Bakodesh Vein Moridin, you always got to go up in all holy matters, step by step, and that applies also to the light of Hanukkah. So the miracle was shown on a higher level day by day to teach us that, as it says in the verse, the mitzvah is a lamp and Torah is a light. With the light of Torah, you have to keep growing. The way you grow is not to take high jumps. If you take a high jump too high, you can fall and break your neck. So therefore go step by step. The aim what it in, but don't stand still. Don't think whatever you're holding in life that you can just say, I'm a good person, I'm a good Jew, and uh, I can lay back. No. You've got to, if you lay back, you stagnate. In what it in. But uh, what is more cryptic is the view of Beit Shammai who say you start with eight and go down to one. And here it's to correspond to Sukkot. So we told you about the bullocks. And uh, we explained which is really already hinted at, not in quite such a systematic, elaborate, elaborate fashion, that the connection is the nations of the world, from 13 bullocks going down to seven bullocks, from the seven days of Sukkot, which indicates that gradually the nations of the world that do not recognize Hashem, they reach the level of seven. The level of seven means to recognize Hashem, as the Shabbat teaches us, not to remain at the level of six. Six is changed in Mehamase. Six corresponds to the world of nature, the physical world. But we have to know that the physical world is a product of the Creator. That's the purpose of the Shabbat. That's the concept of seven. And we've often explained this, is elaborated upon very much by the Maral. That six <coughs> represents three directions of, of three dimensional world, which is six direction. And the seventh <coughs> is the abstract. Shavat vay navash. Just like even the human being, there's a nefesh. Each human being has got a non material inner self. Through the power of the nefesh, where we have a direct window to Hashem, because the nefesh itself is transcendental. So we said today, Boruch Nafshes Hashem, Oshkodesh. But the, the, not the non Jewish world doesn't recognize it. That's why we start with 13 bullocks. 13 is 6 and 7. It means 
on the first day, the six and seven together. In other words, the nations of the world, they live on the level of six, materialistic life. Only on the seventh day of Sukkot, they come to the level of seven. Because seven represents recognition of Hashem. This is the brilliant analysis in detail. You'll find it in what's an English translation on this chapter, which you find in the Jerusalem Bible, it's 146, where you have the description of of um, I'm sorry, page 168, 167, six, no, also not just one, one Pinchos, which is, which you'll find on page 198. There you have the seven days, Sukkot. But to this, Rav Hirsch adds a very important teaching. First of all, on the seventh day, Hoshana Rabbah, which uh, is um, the time when the nation of the world, as described in Zechariah, will come to celebrate the festival of Sukkot, and then it said on that day, Yashem Echad Ushmo Echad, but also the nation of the world will join it with the people of Israel to recognize the seventh dimension. The people of Israel will still have the special task of being Mamlechat Kohanim. For us, it's the Taya Mitzvot, we'll receive the Sinai, which bring us in relation to the nation of the world, like the Kohen is to the people. So to this, Rav Hirsch adds another concept. It has to do with Sukkot. Why does this happen on Sukkot specifically? So he explains that the Sukkah represents the recognition because the schacht got the Shem Shammai on it, the recognition that we are guided by Hashem, the direction of our life. Yechezkel also, the final wars, the nations will wage against God, against its workings, and the leader wages these wars is called God. Now the wars of Gog and Magog, and according to all indications, we're in the middle of them. This is what I say has got to do with Basman Azeh. So he suggests that Gog skims to the root Kagag, and you notice the formation of a roof. Therefore, Gog is the opposite of Sukkah. Sukkah is unstable, weak roofing, which is not installed by a craftsman, but it's really just a product of the natural creation of Hashem, which you have to use. But one of the conditions of the schach is that it must not be dedicated for any human purpose. It's not Makabel Tumah. In other words, we recognize that Hashem protects us through nature if we dedicate our lives to his service. This is the whole content of the history of man is capsulized by this contrast between the sukkah and the gag. Just as people have the power to put up walls, artificial walls to enclose their own sphere, and safeguard it against their fellow earthly creatures. So they imagine they should secure themselves against heaven, against God, 
and the effects of his power to direct matters. They think they should take their fate into their own hands and protect themselves by their own power, and thus crown the building of human greatness with a game of roof, rendering them independent of God. This is the struggle of the Gag against the Sukha. In the roof delusion of human greatness, man will find no rest. And I'd like to add to these comments of Rav Hirsch that today, what is the vast energy of human beings to protect themselves in this world is to either to build uh, underground protections, deep down underground, covered with <coughs> large layers of concrete and other metals to protect themselves. Or they build big buildings, high buildings, to go and think that that's the way they can establish their strength in this world. Or they go further into outer space in order to have more strength. And even the most recent international conference where they came to the conclusion you've got to do something about, about the, the erosion of the, of the climates that yeah. take place to control them. They think human beings can control everything in this world, on this planet. This is all part of the Gag concept. That's Mechemet Gog. Mm. That's the roof delusion of human greatness. That man is the measure of all things with scientific work and working together. We can protect ourselves, which is really a continuation of the Migdal Bova, yeah, which was knocked down. So, world history begins with the building of the tower, the Tower Beba, and ends with the building of the Sukkah. The builders of the tower worshipped human power and sought to conquer heaven. The builders of the Sukkah will lend homage to God and rejoice in their lives on earth. So you see, other religions teach man how to merit the next world by renouncing this world. Judaism teaches man to perform his duty in his lifetime so that he may attain bliss already in this world and so that the life of the world to come should begin even during his life on earth. So this is the teaching that emanates the festival of Sukkot to Israel of every generation. And the offerings of this festival make this teaching universal hope for the future of all nations. From the pinnacle of its national joy, the people of God look to the future happiness of all mankind. So sages say, at the peak of the joy of the festival of Sukkot, which embraces the hopes of Israel and all mankind, flowed the world springs of salvation. This is Oshavte Maimbesatzon Maineh Ashua, this is from this Pasuk, which the young disciples and prophets drew the Holy Spirit. So there are really two, two concepts here, for, which explain to us the identification of Sukkot with the relationship between Am Yisrael and the nations of the world. One of them is, we Am Yisrael, we say that mankind will only find true happiness ultimately by recognizing Hashem is the master of history and that He is the one, if we dedicate ourselves to Him, who will bring us security. And one of the points of security, God against the sukkah. After this, I'll tell you a personal episode. I still remember when, um, when we were lived in the country near the end of the Second World War. We, we, had, we had a house in the country, and there were bombs going over our home. We, had, had, we also had an underground shelter near the Sukkah. I still remember the Sukkah. No, they would put the doodle bugs, the V1, the V2, that uh, they were unmanned missiles. 
that uh, exploded sometimes in our vicinity. And that's why as soon as you heard them droning on top, you had to straight away run down into the shelter. So I remember my father, the Italian said, no, we're here in the sukkah. Never mind. You could sit and perhaps go under the table. We don't have to run out. We we'll say, if you can get there in time, okay. But he said the sukkah itself will be our protection. And this is what's written in the prophets in the Gomorrah. In the time when there'll be uh, wars of Gog and Magog, the sukkah would be the protection. And so that's the concept of security. But he adds here another point. Sukkot is also the festival of the greatest use of all the possibilities of material joy. It says, more than any other festival, you've got to rejoice. And in the sukkot, you've got to eat and drink and sleep. You've got to feel secure and happy and have enjoyment. And so that's why you have simple space of Sheva from which the prophets took the inspiration. That why should, what's the Sheva? Because you can draw from the Mainai Ashua, the fountains of salvation, which has happened in the past if you trust Hashem. There will still be a separate task, the seven of, 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 of as he described before, the seven bullocks. Bullocks means power, physical power, physical, physical life. We, we, we as Jews, have to be productive and creative to spread the message to the rest of the world. Therefore, we have a higher level of observance than the Gentiles. Gentiles have the seven Noahide laws, which are equivalent to, to over 70 mitzvot of the Torah. Because seven is categories. You can even see how all the aspects, almost all of them, of social laws which apply to the Jews apply similarly to Gentiles. It's, it's mainly specific aspects of Shabbat and Yom Tov and other concrete symbols which teach us a stronger aspect of the covenant we've made with Hashem. We have to be a kingdom of priests to the non-Jews like the Kohanim within our people have also special laws. The Kohen Gadol even more for the rest of the nation. Now, this, it's very interesting that this is really quite a fantastic teaching. You'll find it elaborated upon in Rav commentary, not only the Chumash, also the way in which it continued in the development by Rav sons who wrote commentaries in a similar way on the prophets that uh, this concept is also developed by the Hasidic Gaon, of the greatest uh, Gaonim. I think he lived about the same time as Rafish, but he had no, no he had, I don't think he could read German. Mm -hmm. and he, but he writes also on this same subject, where he says, that um, how can we understand Beit Shammai? So I'm going to paraphrase his words because they're very significant. What is the significance of the bullocks of the festival, which are in this, in this chapter, which you shall have in front of you, within the sea? Say it like this. It teaches us that the power of the nation of the world goes down. What does it mean? Why does it go down? It says, Racham of our Kol We say the compassion of Hashem is on all His creatures, certainly on all human beings. And why is it that, why is it particularly on Sukkot? So you say, he connects it with the Gomorrah the beginning of Robert Lazara, which maybe is known to some of you, says in the future, the nation of the world will come in front of Hashem, when Hashem 
is giving the full reward to the people of Israel, the time of the redemption. So the nations will come and say, um, give us another chance. Give us a mitzvah to fulfill now. And what does Hashem say? Yes. Which mitzvah does He give them? Sit in the sukkah. Yeah, and He says the sukkah is an easy mitzvah. Why is it easy? Because the following. So what happens? Let's see in a minute what happens. So therefore everybody comes along and he goes and builds a sukkah on the top of his roof. I think you can even connect this. He doesn't say this, but, but I'm connect, I can you connect it directly what Rav Hirsch says. What's it mean they do it on top of the roof? Because the roof represents security through the engineering of the human being. So you have, you have each roof, you need, a, uh, you need an architect, you need a building engineer, a constructor. And today, to build a roof means to build protection against nuclear energy, against the hydrogen bomb, hmm. against uh, huge storms and hurricanes. People need today, person, that, that, and even you, today it means having satellites in outer space to protect this globe. And today they're trying to change the climate. All this all included. So every, that's why it says, or it says, Besedah, you want us to make a sukkah to trust Hashem, we'll do it on the top of the roof. <laughs> on top of this concept, we'll add it to the, okay, we'll do our part. But we also, you say we've got to say, recognize everything that comes from Hashem. Okay, we recognize it comes from you. We put a sukkah on top. Hmm. Doesn't mean we give it up. Baruch Gabbard. What does HaKadosh Baruch do? He takes the hottest sun, which is in midsummer, Kufus Tammuz. And everybody, when it gets too hot in the sukkah, he kicks it down. And he goes out. Now, why is it, so, and as a result, what's the Gemara say? The Jew, a Jew also, if it gets too hot, what's the din? He doesn't have go to out. go out. Or it gets allowed. too rainy. He can go out. It's there. Yeah. He's allowed to go in. Yeah. By the way, I just want to say a word, a comment, because I read this to Shuva. It's one of the things I wonder about. It, it, it says in the Chumash, you've got to live in the, in the sukkah life, live in the house, which includes what? Eating, drinking, drinking, and what else? Eating with your wife, sleep. sleeping. Sleeping. You've got to sleep in the sukkah. And I'm telling you, api alocha, you can eat, you can have a bit of fruit and a drink outside the sukkah. What is the prohibition? What is the real mitzvah which you shouldn't nullify? Sleep. You if you're having a meal, a fixed meal, you must have in the sukkah. But it's just a snack. In Minatoyo, you can eat outside. What's with sleep? No. Even a temporary sleep, you have to have it in the sukkah. So it comes along at the Rubavitch Rebbe and tells the Hasidim, don't sleep in the sukkah. Yeah. yeah? Why not? So he wrote a chuva about it. Oh. Since. But I must say, in this matter, uh, I think the other Poskim were right. I don't know. Because my. He said, with the, the free to go rabbi, his father-in-law, also didn't sleep in the sukkah. But he had a reason for it. Cold climate. He come, came from Peterburg, from, from, from northern parts of Russia. Mm. And then afterwards, even in the New York area, on the East Coast, the din is, if it's too cold, it, it, you're, you're not yoitz in the sukkah. No, if you feel too cold in the shiva, you're not yoitz. So you've got to make a sukkah in the cold weather where you feel really comfortable. If, you, if it's mid time a sukkah, you're not allowed to be there. But there's a story told. You know, Chaim Oizer was one of the Gedolim <coughs> in pre-war and also during the war. It's Rav Vilna, very great Kaon. And um, he, had, he had a very bad code on sukkah. So, Don't forget about the, the, the so, Rebbe. You said about the Rebbe. I'm coming sure. back to this. Don't forget. <laughs> And so, he, so, so Chaim Oizer had a very bad cold, and um, so he didn't sleep in the sukkah. 
Okay. Yeah, he slept. He was in bed all day, on the day as well. Mm -hmm. He was in bed, Dr. Eagle. But then a guest came, so to insisted to go and give something to drink and eat to the guest who came. He went to the soccer very much again, because he said, "All right, Mitzah is bought from the soccer, but Achnoset Orchem to go. The guest comes specially, he came from a far country to visit me, and he." Um, Got to give him something to drink, and he so he, I'll see him in the sukkah. So he dressed himself very warm in the sukkah. <laughs> I sat by the side, but 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 the din is there's also uh, the the rebbe before him, and one perhaps one of the <coughs> previous rebbes, they didn't sleep in the sukkah. Why not? Because it was too cold. Even though there was some tzaddikim, you know, who said, "Well, we'll dress ourselves warm," and they tried to get them those years wanted to eat it and make make a make a warm sukkah. But please, he has a whole sheet of there, how, why, why, why. But even, even according to Teshuvah, uh, this, in the way he describes it, Pikabola and so on, so the, his aspect will only apply, a simple way of learning, for the Rebbe himself, for the Rebbe's, for Tzadikim, or great saints. But, but, that he should say, and this, his argument is, if the, if the Hasidim, some of the Hasidim say, well, I've, I've got to follow the Rebbe. If the Rebbe doesn't sleep, I also won't sleep in the sofa. And I've had quite a few halachic discussions over the Rav Kvach Abadam and said, I mean, I, I said, look, even with the truth of the Rebbe, you don't really have a head to. Hmm. Well, anyway, so he got everything in the sukkah. So, okay. so, so, so the Gemara asks the question, if it's too hot or too cold, a Jew also is potter from the sukkah. And he's called an idiot, which means a lay, uh, called a head yacht, head yacht, if he is strict upon himself and says, I will be in the sukkah. It's not, not sensible. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the, the, can you say because they kick the sukkah, it, uh, it's, a, it's, it's against the din? They fulfill the myths of a soccer when it's possible. So the Gemara says, but but a Jew doesn't kick kick no. down the soccer because of that. He's, no. He's sad. sad. Goes out of the soccer and doesn't kick it down. So if what's behind this? We're talking about mankind, the other nations, when they see the redemption coming, they <coughs> say I want mitzvot. In other words, the Chama, or he himself explains it, the Chama is uh, is he explains it like this. He says, the main aspect of the Torah given to the people of Israel is to show that everything comes from Hashem and to bring Hashem into life, not just in the synagogue and the Beis Hamidrash. You've got to bring Hashem to life in your eating, drinking and sleeping. Whatever physical things you do, you've got to sanctify them. It should be fixed in our heart. To be Makadish, all our actions, which you have to do because we're human beings, and you've got to try to get the Kedush of Hashem into the physical aspects of life. That's the essence of the Sukkah. Shakur's Buru commanded us, Dafka, eat and drink and sleep, and even want to go for a little walk, try and do it inside the Sukkah. All in your name of Oilam Hazeh, of this world. In fact, this is the exact equivalent of the last paragraph here of Rav Hirsch. In other words, that we've got the duty, the Kadesh as Olam Hazer. What will happen in the future world, we don't really know. We're not up to it. We're, you know, we've got some glimpses of it through near death experience to what, what, what we're told. Be'emuna. But the physical life, the sanctified, the, so let's say the other religions, they believe in, oh, Catholics. The best thing is not to get married. What do the Torah says, Davka. Kedusha is Kedushin. Kedusha is Kedush on Shabbos, where you have a good meal and drink wine. That's Kedusha. So we've got to bring everything of oil and mazeh. And a person should be surrounded as a result with mitzvot in every aspect of material life. Because he should know that has to be sanctified the Kedush of Hashem. And that's what Hashem said to the nations of the world. I give you an easy mitzvah. 
because you enjoy physical life. You're basically a materialist and you're recognizing Hashem already. So go and fulfill the mitzvah. That's the mitzvah of sukkah. And this mentioned the Nevi'im also. The test will be those nations, it says, those nations which fulfill the mitzvah of sukkah will be saved. And those that don't, they'll disappear. The nations of the world with their sukkah, <coughs> they don't understand how can you make all material things spiritual with a mitzvah like, like sukkah. The sukkah has the kadusha of the Chagiga. Chag HaSukkah, as the Gemara says, just like the name of Hashem goes on the Korban Chagiga, on the festival offering, so it also goes on the Schach, on the Sukkah, because the festival offering which you eat, the Simcha, you've got to eat to enjoy. You're enjoying, giving full enjoyment to your animal soul that wants to have good food and nice drinks. Yes, good food and nice drinks, but sanctify them to Hashem, recognize they come from Him. That's what you have to this, do. This Kedush of Sukkahs that you're talking about? Yeah. Kamoi Sukkah, Mikdash, Mikdush, that says in the Gemara, Shem Shomayim, Chal, Al HaSukkah, Kamoi Shichal Al Chagiga. That is the concept. Hashem makes the sun, the Mitzah on the sun, and brings it right onto Sukkot. Like we almost had the Mitzah on the sun here, before Hanukkah, <laughs> almost, you know, to some extent. Mm. But it took... Because something's happened in the weather, and until today, the weather forecasts, they, 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 they see they can't really pro it's, probably predict. It's scheduled to rain yesterday, but it only rained when he says, ending. please, please. Okay. It's, it, it's a kinoi, this is a kinoi for koach asechel shib order. As is, as is, and that's why the non Jews count for the sun. That means they recognize the the Chama B'tkufa Tamos is a metaphorical description to the way in which they base their lives on what is natural. And that's why they say the sukkah is not for me. They say this is something too difficult for us. I, we, we could, we might be able to become um, abstainers, to become ascetics and not have any pleasure, not have marriage and so on, and, but, but to go and enjoy sanctify everything material that's too difficult for us so he said he says this is the way to describe the pore achak which the Torah commanded us which the Torah commanded us and the nation of the world they under the direction of nature but they've got to recognize the kingship of Hashem. And he says this is the purpose of the bullocks of Sukkot. That gradually they will learn. From the example of the people of Israel, ultimately they all recognize we are under the direction of Hashem, just like the people of Israel. And the Nes of Hanukkah is that the Hasmonean, Kohanim, were able to overcome the Hellenists and the Greeks who wanted to take the people of Israel away from the religion, as they said, right on the horn of the ox that you have no portion with the God of Israel. Which means the purpose of the corrupt Hellenists was to go and transform everything to worship of nature and all their gods of nature. And therefore, even their concept of godliness was trans transferred to the powers of nature, the sun, the moon, and the different forces of, of the world are given different gods. Each one has a special power, and they give it the name of God. And that, that was what they tried to bring into Jewish circle. And they, unfortunately, led many of them astray. But then came the light of Torah, which is holy, came through the Hashemunahim to recognize that Hashem is the only one who rules all creation. And He is the one who leads all the forces of nature. There's no other power. And to remember this great miracle, that's why the sages introduced the lamp of Hanukkah to fix in our hearts this concept, a bit charm, I say, is pochet for it goes down. Because ultimately, 
every year. When this time comes, the powers of nature being worshipped, which the non-Jews believe in, will become less and it will be able to bring them under the wings of the Divine Presence, like Chag HaSukot. These are the Pari Achag, which is the best time to go and bring this change. So we have to kindle the lights in order to bring them down. So we say the Beit hole on Hanukkah, the main victory was because it merits the light of Torah. Therefore we have to show how with the light of the Torah we keep on going up in the Kedush of Hashem and Barach. But what will this do? This will bring influence to the nations of the world. So as a result of this, there will be revealed to all the nations of the world this power. So it's, it's very similar to the concept developed by by um, Rav Hirsch. So now you have any questions. I have to ask you also, I'm trying to get uh, this, this some of my shiurim to get them um, on a printout. And if people interrupt in the middle, it's very difficult. So please ask you, I beg of you, I give you, now you can ask any questions. Any questions you have, ask them now, please. To catch the Kedusha of the Yom Tov, like you were talking about, yes. Sukkot, um, how important is it to go to the mikvah before? Um, to, go to, the, to go to the mikvah, yeah. like I heard that in, for Shabbat you don't need to go to the mikvah, although a lot of people do, uh, but for the Yom Tov it's very important to go to the mikvah to catch the Kedusha because it's on a lower level than Shabbat. Yeah, Yom Tov is more important than, than Shabbat. And then with the... Uh, the Shitta of the Chabad Rebbe, it was, I guess, because the, the Rebbe's are on a different level, or was yeah. he following Minhag from his, from his, you know, forebears? Is that... Well, these, the... Because there's, it, a, lot, it's there's both. a lot of, there's a lot of Chabadists. It's, it's yeah. Minhag from his for, for some of his forebears, I don't know, but I, 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 I don't have enough information if, if this, I doubt very much the Bala Tanya, the founder of Chabad, was one of the greatest poskim. Now he went very much according to the law of the Shulchan Aruch. And I can't imagine, I've never heard that he wouldn't sleep in a sukkah, except if it was too cold, that he's not supposed to. But otherwise, I'm sure, according to his strict adherence to every aspect of halacha, and even keeping to the times, which some Chabadniks are lenient in as well. But, you know, they're the, the, the down late, after this month to fill up and so on, after this month to clear to me. I mean, others, they, they don't have the same Hakpot, but it, it, my, my impression is the Bala Tanya would be very much against it. But, uh, you know, it needs, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a moot point. I mean, I know there are many Chabad Hasidim who do sleep in the soccer. Because it's, a, it's at the end of the Torah. But Pashtus. If it's again Eretz it's it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it, unless there's some sudden rain or something, but generally speaking, it's, that, and, it's and very then, nice. And then you said all the nations <laughs> come and offer sacrifices. Yeah. These, these are all great ideas, but we don't have a temple. And how do we get the temple? And what's the Jew's mission? Is it to sit all day and learn? Or like Chabad, I don't think anyone could argue, you know, the great impact that they had in going and reaching out and doing yeah. Kirov, and I think you're a big, you know, proponent of that as well as doing Kirov and, and bringing back people to yeah. to Tiddishkut. So is that the job of the Jew to bring back the temple so we can do all these great things, or is it to sit and to learn? I mean, I'm not asking for like for each person, but generally speaking, what is our our know, duty is to learn in order to teach, in order to act. The learning has to be the outgoing, Torah Chesed. And the learning's got to be for the purpose of spreading the light of Torah in, in, amongst all Am Israel, which, but when it comes to, we don't believe in missionarizing the non-Jews. In other words, it's rather through example. Through our example, 
That is the best way without, um, especially not to, we can teach non-Jews, like even Jews themselves, how do, you, how do you improve them? Not through legislation and not through imposition. The, the derech, uh, since, since, since unfortunately so many Jews have gone astray, the derech is to teach, teach as much as possible. So in order to teach as much as possible, you've got to learn as much as you can. And they're different people who've got different tasks. But to go and build the temple is not possible until, until we reach the level when the majority of Jews in Eretz Israel will do Teshuvah. And it's clear without, a, without that, it would be very counterproductive to go and build a temple and even to bring Korbanot if people don't, even, don't yet live on the level of Korbanot, as is constantly said by the prophets, even when there was a temple. In fact, to come onto this, there's going to be a deeper aspect of understanding Hanukkah, which I also want, I still want to complete before Hanukkah is over. Since we've gone a little bit under the surface of, of the bullocks, um, now there's only time to ask you a kasha. So if you can let, let me just record this kasha, and then the Lineda tomorrow will find the answer. There's a very big question on this state, statement of the sages, the 70 bullocks correspond to the 70 nations, which we've just discussed and, and from different aspects. So there's a Mishnah, also brought in the Tanaitic commentary on the Chumash. It's like this. The bullocks were also accompanied by goats. See it in. And it's very interesting, but by the way, the 70 nations we know already described in the Pasha of Noah. And all the different nations can be identified to some extent, how they developed, and not only ethnically, but also from all other angles. But if you look carefully at these seven days, the each, each day they were accompanied by goats, the chatos, and the goats came as a sin offering. So some, the, if you work it out according to the bullocks, which were accompanied by goats, so in the seven days description of all the offerings, sometimes it's called a sa'ir, and sometimes it's called seir izim. Now, the, why the two names for the goat? Is con, a goat in Hebrew is what? Yes. Huh? One name for a goat is Sa'ir, another name for a goat is an Ace. 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 Why is a goat called an Ace? What else do you know has the same letters? As. Uh... As. Heavy. As Kanamer. You should be arrogant, like a leopard. <laughs> It says in the beginning of the when you get up in the morning, be like a leopard. Jump out. You shouldn't jump out straight away because they should just wait a little bit, but they should jump out of bed. Ask another to fulfill the will of your Father in heaven. On the other hand, ask for him, a person who's got an arrogant face, is the Gehenna. Go to Gehenna. <laughs> So what's, and then the sages say, who is the Az Shiba Umot? It says, the, the, the Az Shiba Umot, amongst the nations of the world, who is the, what means strength? Who is the most arrogant one? You know who? I'm Israel. <laughs> somebody, somebody once said, Jews are like, just like every human being, except more so. <laughs> See? And chutzpah, you know, going to the American Dictionary. Jews got chutzman. Jews. We've got Azov. 
But to us it can be used for good and bad. And the goat is called an ace. And in this in this description, some of it is sa'il.